Yeah, good morning, everyone. I think we should still give some other folks time to join in. So in the meantime, can we just like introduce ourselves? Um, my name is Alafia. I lead the education and research team at Free Knowledge Africa. I also did the GLAM team. So this morning, we'll be talking about We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be talking about the, the Creative Commons licenses, the open, the open licenses and how we can use it and its benefits to education, research and, and innovation. I'll be sharing my screen in, in some minutes, but can we just like wait for like five more minutes or three more minutes? So by 10, 15, we kickstart. Does that make sense with everybody? Do I have just now? Yeah, so quick introduction again. Uh, my name is Alafia Abam Aladipopo. I lead the education and research team at Finland and I'm also in charge of GLAMS. So today our webinar is titled Breaking boundaries, um, open licensing, following innovation, education, science, technology, and preservation and cultural preservation world, worldwide. The concept of open licensing is, is rampant globally. There are different types of open licenses. There are multiple open licenses all over the world. And if you check the, 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 the if you check the the prominent innovation, the prominent technologies as it relates to to the development of the world, we would see that knowledge being shared openly has actually given has actually given other creators that opportunity to to learn fastly and to showcase their work. So open licensing is expanding beyond software and it is a crucial, crucial component for creators all over the world. So as it relates to open licensing and education, open licensing brings accessibility. Open licensing has unlocked access to quality resources for millions of people who would otherwise be unable to assess them. And in education also, open licenses has, has encouraged collaboration between teachers and students, allowing for crowdsourced educational content, lessons, planning, and activities. Open licenses has also transformed the e-learning space as it has, made, it has closed the gap between distance and learning, and anyone can access high quality online classes or take them and take them anywhere from the world. So as it relates to science, open licensing has, has created a room for transparency in science. Researchers can now openly share their methods and results, which accelerates scientific dis discovery. And also as, it, as this is, uh, as this was mentioned in education, open licenses fosters collaboration between researchers, allowing them to pull resources and findings. This helps them tackle complex challenges more quickly and efficiently. And it, open license also encourages data sharing and make scientific findings open to scrutiny, review, and critique. This leads to a better understanding of scientific research and application. I'm sure some of us here are, are familiar with Science Direct. We know Science Direct as that platform where we can get research papers and all. So as, as a scientist, open license has enabled, and for scientists rather, for scientists, open license has enabled multiple scientists to create their work and release it under open sciences and multiple other scientists can use their work, which 
which gives room for transparency, collaboration, and data sharing, as 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 it relates to the to the paid to paid paid restrictions, where you actually have to pay for research papers. So, open science and technology, like for innovative technology, open sciences, open licenses is driving innovation across an array of industry. It provides businesses with individuals. It's provide businesses and individuals with resources they need to create innovative software and products. Open license software is also freely available. I'm sure majority of us are familiar with open, uh, open licensed software, such as, why am I forgetting the name? I think it's Lumia should be Lumion. No. Yeah. The, sorry, I'm I'm particular I'm forgetting the particular open license, but I'll find it before the end of the session. So it is like it is given it is a software, it is an interface where it gives everybody available use for internet connection and it creates a level playing ground for businesses and individuals, regardless of their financial resources. And also open licenses encourages developers to use other people's tools and create user-friendly applications, which is built up on existing technologies, thereby leading to an adoption and greater customer satisfaction. Uh, in, this, in this video, I'll, uh, uh, this slide rather, I'll be talking about open license and the future. Sorry, um, there's something. Open licenses and cultural preservation. One, we at Free Knowledge Africa, we are focused on, not we are focused actually, we are particular about cultural preservation. And open licenses gives us that avenue to like, create our culture, document our culture, preserve our culture for, for the generations on board. The concept of digitization comes to mind. Uh, the, the concept of creating 3D models of existing cultural heritage sites comes to mind so that generations on board, anybody, uh, generations on bond, anybody anywhere in the world can actually have access to this content you are creating, to this cultural content that is not that is not readily rampant. So open licenses gives us that avenue to encourage preservation, to encourage sharing cultural works, and to ensure that they are accessible to the future generation. Open licenses also makes makes or uh, improves uh, diversity and the spreading of culture, as I've mentioned previously particularly indigenous people and indigenous group and underrepresented community. Uh, I think last year we visited, we visited Plateau states. We, we documented the Tarok tribe in, in Plateau states. And the, con the, the, the reason why this was possible is because of open licenses. Some of the images, some of the pictures we took about about the cultural heritage, about the monuments, particular to that region in Plateau State, Nigeria, in the Langtang, uh, Northern Langtang or Southern Langtang local government in Nigeria. Those images are available on, create, on Wikimedia Commons and they are released under open license, under open license software or other open license. So Open license promotes diversity for indigenous communities and underrepresented community. So now think about uh, over, two, over 200 tribes in Nigeria that are underdocumented, that their history, their heritage is not on the internet. Open license gives us that avenue to document that heritage and to enable conservation of endangered cultural heritage sites, artifacts, and by providing remote access and encouraging participation in restoration projects. I hope I'm making sense. So the next slide, the next slide is talking about open licensing, future possibilities and expansion. 
open license enables is becoming more per uh, pervasive and universal. It encourages the global reach. More countries, including those outside the Western world, are developing licenses programs to promote to promote sharing of information and culture. Open license is also bridging is also bridging divides. Open license is making is enabling is enabling us to develop collaborative network of inclusivity, and it's also helping us across the globe to benefit from each other, regardless of geographical distance and political affiliations. Open license is pouring innovation and entrepreneurship. It is providing new business opportunities. It is encouraging entrepreneurs to enter the market and provide and to create innovative products. So it is also it is also the future innovation and creativity, as it is empowering individuals to create and dis disperse knowledge beyond traditional institutions. This is funda this can fundamentally change the way we think and interact with the world around us. It is also increasing collaboration. Open licensing is enabling people to work together in new ways, fostering collaboration and other innovation. This will lead to exciting possibilities and breakthrough in technology science. Also, for digital rights management, open open or Sorry, open licensing will lead to breakthrough in technology, science, education, and the art. That is that for digital rights management, as the concept of open license expands, uh, maintaining the integrity of digital works and ensuring proper attribution are essential to protect the rights of artists and creators. I'm sure this is focusing on the use of uh, metadata and the, and the rest. So the next slide, yeah. So if you have any questions, uh, you can you can drop a message in the chat box. Uh, Hope would read them at the end, end of the session, or if at the or if you are just interested in partnering with us and saying anything or reaching out to Free Knowledge Africa in the future, you can send a mail to info at freeknowledgeafrica.org. So the next slide is how we strike a balance between copyright and copyright, copyleft. So I'll just be dis discussing basic. I'll be discussing on the basis of on the basics of copyright, the concept of copyleft, and how finding the right balance between the two can benefit creators and users. So the concept of the copyright law is like the copyright law gives exclusive rights. It grants creators exclusive rights to their original work for a limited time. Excuse me. It promotes fair use. It allows certain uses of copyrighted material without seeking permission of, from the creator. That's just the basics of the copyright law. And when infringement occurs when someone violates exclusive rights of the copyright holder. And public domain actually refers to works in the public domain, the works that are not subject to copyright and can be used freely. So copyright, sorry, oh, sorry. Copyright is just when a particular work has a right, like you cannot reuse it because all the rights are reserved to the creator. I believe that is like clear. So what is copyleft? Copyleft is like a licensing system that allows creators to give users the right to use, modify, and distribute their work under certain condition. Copyleft is open source. It is often used in open source software to ensure that it remains freely accessible to all. And Creative Commons licenses allow creators to choose the extent at which they want to share their work. So the balance between all rights reserved, uh, which is copyright, 
and copyleft is the Creative Commons license. There's a video later in the in the slides. There's a video later in the slides that I would I would I would read. So moving on, the comparison between copy copy copyleft and copyright is the flexibility. Copyright offers more flexible uh, offers more flexible in copyright offers more flexible in how the work can be used. Why copyright can be more restrictive? Uh, control copyright gives creator complete control over their work. Why copyleft allows users to modify and distribute it under certain conditions. And while as it relates to profit, the major difference is that creators can profit from their copyrighted works. Why copyleft mandate that the work remains freely accessible to all. So the benefit of copyleft is that it is open source. It allows the creator for the, for the, it allows for the creation of open source software which promotes collaboration and innovation. Uh, it, is, it encourages the use and sharing of educational materials, making them more accessible to everyone. You know, it allows for more creative expression and collaboration resulting in more diverse and unique works. So there are some critiques to the copy, uh, critiques of copyleft, which is copyleft can still impose certain restriction on the use and distribution of works, which may limit creativity and innovation. Uh, Busola will be explaining more as it relates to Creative Commons licenses as a copyleft tool. So also some argue that copyleft can result in exploitation of creators as they may not be fairly compensated for their work also another critique is that it well, enforcing copyleft licenses can be difficult and costly which can make them difficult for creators to maintain so that is that about the critiques and i'm sure we have there's no way there's no way we can actually or you can actually create a product and there won't be there won't be what's the word there won't be some faults in it so i i agree that there are some limitations to copyleft so let's now find the balance between copyleft and copyright so for certain models like creative commons licenses offer the hybrid solution that balances some of the uh, that balances some of the benefit of copyleft and copyright. So creators can creators and users make use can can work together to find a solution that works for everyone and respect the rights of both parties. And this is talking about collaboration as it relates to the balance of copyleft and copyright. Also in transparency, clear communication and transparency, transparency between creators and users can help prevent misunderstanding and disputes down the road. So to conclude and the next steps to take as it relates to copyleft and copyright, I believe that it is important to improve on this balance by growing together. Creators and users can work together to promote innovation and accessibility, maybe improve on existing licenses in the Creative Commons space. And we can, we can actually improve what is on ground by creating more solutions to 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 the Creative Commons license or any other open source licenses we want to make use. Ultimately, creators can decide what licensing model best suits their needs and values, whether it's copyright, copyleft, and something between. So there is a video which kind of summarizes what 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 we are watching or what we have done here. And I want us to watch for like the next two minutes. Enjoy. Please, I need feedback. Can we, did we hear the audio from the video? Oh, can you give me feedback? Um, can you, can you play? 
the audio from the video, you can hear it, right? Yeah, like try yeah. to What about now? Can we hear it? No. No. I'll play for like five seconds. I want to be certain if you can now hear it. No, still can't hear it. Wow. And the 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 mutes. Okay. I think it will be it will have to be a feature with Zoom. I would try and sort that while we move. I will try and sort that because I can I can actually hear the the audio you get, bam, bam. I'm trying to see if everyone else. Well, let's Busala go ahead. Uh, the, this video is actually a summary of all what I will say and the things Busala will say. So Busala, can we see it now? No. What about now? No, no. Don't worry. Let's Busola just go ahead with us. Busola, do you want me to continue the sharing? Um, OK, um, sorry. Is there like a request? Like Would you like to answer the question before we move on to Busola? Yeah, chat. OK, it's from Wally. Is open sourcing, open licensing similar to open sourcing technology, especially programming languages, which are exactly like this is this is the similarity. This is the concept of open open license. So let me read the question. Is open license similar to open sourcing technology, especially programming languages, which has helped the tech space tremendously? Yes, it is, it is similar. So, Busola, just let me know when, once you want me to move your slides. Okay, um, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. So, my name is Ulu Busola Furabi, and I'm the program associate here at Minerit Africa. And I have heard me as speaking a lot about how um, open licenses build innovation in various sectors science, technology, education, QM cultural heritage, the glam space and all. So I will be discussing about specific open licenses. Now he spoke about um, copyright and copyleft. And we know copyright as being all rights reserved and copyleft as being um, no rights reserved. So creative common licenses kind of bridge the gap between copyright and copyleft because it's not everyone that will be willing to either place their works on no right reserve, even though they are interested in open licenses, but they would still want some things for themselves. They won't just want to put it out there and like without any restrictions or any licenses. So um, if I talk about the creative common licenses, there are a lot of open licenses. We have the general public license, we have um, MIT license, open data commons license, Mozilla public license. There are a lot of open licenses, but we'll be focusing on the creative common licenses. Um, like I said earlier, the Creative Common License gives certain limitations and restrictions to ways by which you can open up open up your work or share your work under open licenses. Like it is on the slide, it, it enables an easier and more flexible sharing of creative works across the world. Okay, please, the next slide. So, um, okay, like I said earlier, um, copyleft was no right reserved. Copyright is all right reserved. So Creative Commons now brings some right reserves. So it kind of bridges the gap. It gives it gives you as a creator of the work a little bit of rights, where you have restrictions on how your works can be done, can be used. Sorry. Now, what is Creative Commons? It's a non-profit. It's a non-profit organization that provides free licenses and tools that copyright owners can use to allow others share, reuse and remix their work. So they, they release the Creative Commons is kind of like an organization that provides these licenses that allows the creators 
to, to share their work in ways others can use them, but still create certain limitations and create certain restrictions on how their works can be used. It's a global network also. It consists of lawyers, activists, artists, educators. Like there are a lot of people that come together to form creative commons. Like you and I can be members of creative commons. It's not something that is restricted to a certain group of people or anything. So it's like, it's a global network, it's a nonprofit and that. So it's a, it provides a standardized system for creators to share their works and specify the terms of use, just like I've been um, emphasizing, it specifies the terms of use. I would explain the, the terms, the certain licenses that are under creative commons. And we have over 1.6 billion licensed works and counting. So you can see that creative commons is a global movement that uh, it, 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 share, it works towards collaborative sharing and innovation. Next slide, please. So why do we need creative common licenses? Like, this is just kind of a recap of what Alafia had spoken about, about the, the um, benefits of open licenses, which creative commons also adapts, unlocking knowledge. Creative commons aims to unlock knowledge by creating a more accessible and equitable world where educational essential resources like educational materials and research can be used because um, most people are restricted in trying to create works because they, 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 they are not able to find resources online. You know, I find a resource online and I see all right to reserve and I can't really do anything with this work except getting the outright permission from the author or as outright permission from the publisher. But Creative Commons kind of allows me to an extent to be able to use those works and it would unlock knowledge, I'll be able to gain something from that work. It also breaks down barriers, you know, barriers of sharing and reusing creations. You know, a lot of, we have a lot of derivative works, like a novel can be read now and then it can be serve, serve as an inspiration for a movie to be created. You know, that's kind of reusing a creation. But if that novel now is released under all rights reserves, I definitely have to have a word or speak with draft house like, mm, a, an official license where we'll discuss and how we we'll go about this. But if it's released under a certain creative common license, I know where my, where my freedom is and where my limitations start. I also have global participation. It's a universal way of bringing everybody. So I can use a work that was created in Australia. I can use a work that was created in America. America. Someone in Europe can use a work created by me because it's a global way of sharing knowledge. Next slide, please. Okay, just to continue with the advantages of using this creative common license is we have a global reach and exposure. Just like I said, it's a way of increasing your reach, increasing your work. So if I create a work today, I, I should know that it's, it's, there's a possibility that someone out there, maybe in a different continent can use my work and increases the reach where my work goes to. Imagine I'm talking about my culture or um, the history of a certain festival that, is, that takes place in my state, you know, and I release the, this information, I release this knowledge under a common license. And someone out there can read about it and be knowledge about what goes on in that festival, what goes on in that place. So it, it gives this exposure to things. But if I release it under all rights reserved, you know, there's a limitation for the rich where that work can get to. It also encourages community collaboration, it supports innovation and learning. And it protects the creator's rights. Like I said at the beginning, not everyone will be willing to use their works under no rights reserved, where anyone can just use it anyway. So Creative Commons protects the creator's rights because there are a variety of licenses where the creator can choose from, and he or she would choose the one suitable to himself that would protect his or her rights and his or her work. Next slide, please. So the different types of licenses, like I said, there are a lot of licenses where creators can choose from, depending on how they want their works to be released. And the good thing about creative common licenses is attribution is like a standard day. For every license, there are about six or seven licenses, but attribution is a common factor there. And what is attribution, which is the first CC by this license allows others to distribute, remix, tweak, and build upon their work, even commercially. But the, the Clause there is as long as the credits the art, the creator for the original creation. So attribution is basically giving attribution, giving credit to the owner of the work. 
and that is a, 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 something common in all licenses. So if I'm going to use your work, I should was created by this person, and then I can use it, I can distribute it, I can remix it, I can even send it, but I have to attribute to you as the original creator of the work that this work was created by you. So that's so if I want to use my work on that CC by now, which is just attribution, the only thing you as a user of my work are expected to do, and which even courtesy demands is just to attribute me. Like I don't care what to use the work for. You could use it for educational reasons, you can use it for commercial purposes, you can use it, uh, you can create derivative works from it, but you should just attribute me. That's the beautiful thing about this license. And the second one here we have um share like. And we can see that it's called CC by SE, the by which stands for attribution, which I said is a constant in all, all the licenses. So share like this license allows others to do the same things, distribute, remix, create, build upon, as long as they create the creator for the original creation, which is CC by, and then use the same license for the derivative work. Now share like is the way Creative Commons licenses are being promoted. So this basically says if you are using my work, I release my work on that maybe CC BY or CC BY SC. So if you're using my work, you should attribute me, you should credit me as the original creator, but then you should also share it in a like manner what, how I also shared my work. So if I'm sharing my work under Creative Commons licenses, you shouldn't create a work using my work and share it under no all rights reserved, you get. So um, share like kind of builds a continuity for Creative Commons, because if you're using my work, you have to share it under Creative Commons license also. If someone's using your work, the person will also has to share it under Creative Commons license and so on and so forth. That is if you are using your work under Share Alike. So there's a clause to, to this license, just aside crediting the original creator, you have to also share the derivative works under the same license the original creator shared yes. And now the third one is non-commercial, which is CC by NC, by being a constant of being attributed, but then this one is, you can't use it for commercial purposes. You have to credit the creator for the original creation, but you should not use it for a commercial purpose. I mean, you should not gain profits from it. You shouldn't gain money from it. You could use it as um, educational resources to teach students in class. You could use it for probably your project, but you shouldn't use it to create a work and start selling that work. So if I'm creating a work and I release my work on that CC by NC, which is non-commercial, I expect you to attribute me, but also just use my work for something that is for like a greater good, not something that you would get um, commercial benefits from. So that is the limitation to CC by NC. And the last on this slide is non-derivative. Now this license allows for redistribution, but the work must remain unchanged and the creator must be credited for the original work. That is CC by NC. Now, by still being a constant, but non derivative, yes, is you could also redistribute my work, but you, you shouldn't change anything from the original work. So imagine I, I, I have a photograph and I take a picture of a shoe or of a shirt, and the shirt's color is purple. If you want to use that work, you shouldn't change the color of the shirt. You shouldn't change it to white or black. You shouldn't change it to gray or any color. You should have to use it purple as it is because. Probably that purple as I have a sentimental connection to that color purple why I created my work. But because I'm releasing it under open license, I choose to release it under CC by ND. So I know that anyone using my work will use that purple. Maybe the purple has a significance to the shirt that I am, I took a picture of. Or I release a work in probably Yoruba language now. You shouldn't translate it to English. When you want to use it, use it as it is in Yoruba. So yeah, this license is kind of people that have sentimental attachments to certain of their works that they don't want it to be tweaked, they don't want it to be changed in any form. So you could also still use this work under open licenses. The only restriction there is that it must remain unchanged. The way the creator published or um, published the work, the way the creator released the work, you should use it in that same manner and by still being a constant. Okay, next slide, please. Now these are like the four main licenses, but there are kind of like interconnections where two licenses can be combined in one. So I could choose to release my work under non-commercial share alike. And remember I, I discussed share alike, I discussed non-commercial, but this one now combines the both of them, which is CC by, remember I said by is a constant in everything. 
CC by NCSE. Now this, this license is just kind of brings the two licenses together. It permits others to use, distribute, modify, and build upon, but for non-commercial purposes only. And also the derivative works must be shared under the same license. So non-commercial, you shouldn't gain profit from it and share alike, it should be released under the same license. So I am, I am combining two licenses together to release my work under. So my work should be, should, should not be used for commercial purposes and also to increase the spread of creative common licenses, it should be shared under the same license. And another combination is non-commercial, non-derivative, which by still being a constant of attribution. And this, this last one is kind of like the most restrictive, the most restrictive common, creative commons license because yeah, you are not allowed, okay, this creative, this license, it allows others to download and share the work for non-commercial purposes only without making any changes to it. So if you are using, if I release my work under CC by NCS, NCND, sorry, there's a mistake on the slide, it's supposed to be NCND. If I release my work under CC by NCND, you know that you are using this work for a non-commercial purpose and you are changing nothing about it. So you have to use the work exactly as it is. You have to attribute me and you have to use it for probably educational resources or something. So imagine you are, you are writing like an essay and the essay has to be in English, something like that. And then I release a work where you can reference something, but my work is in Yoruba. Now that work is kind of not suited for that, except to report it then in your work, you you provide a translation for it in your work, but not, not translating my own work. You get so if you are using my work, you have to use it as it is in a way that it can rhyme. So someone creating a Yoruba essay, and that would flow very well because you are not changing, you are not translating my work. You have to use it as it is, but you shouldn't use it for commercial purposes, like selling the materials or, or um, profiting from it. And now the last one, which is, it's people, it's not really a traditional creative common license, which is CC0, also known as public domain dedication. Um, the concept of public domain is works that are without um works that are without restrictions, without copyright. That's what the public domain is. And there are certain ways works enter into the public domain, and education is one of them. So creative commons kind of created a license to cover up that aspect. So you can see also known as CC0 or Creative Commons 0. This is not a traditional Creative Commons license. Rather, it is a public domain dedication tool. Now, CC0 allows creators to weave all their rights in all works, effectively placing the work into the public domain. So we can attribute this to something like um, copyleft, where the author weaves every single right, including attribution. So including like, you are now even mandated to say I am the creator of this work because if my work is in public domain, you can use it as you see fit. You can modify it, you can distribute it, you can use it for commercial purposes, you can tweak it. You don't even have to reference me or acknowledge me as a creator. This is like the, the most open of all creative common licenses. That's why it's not really even regarded as a creative common license. It's kind of like an, a dedication to how people can release their work. So this is like a summary of all the licenses, CC by, CC by SE, CC by NC, CC by zero, which is also referred, some people refer to it as public domain, the CC by, the CC zero, sorry, there's no by day because attribution is not even mandated. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so these are the logos for each of the, each of the licenses. You can see by being a constant, which is the person. You can see share alike, which is like a recycling method because it kind of bring everybody back to creative common licenses. You can see non-commercial with the dollar sign and cross over it. We can see um, the combinations, non-derivative, non-derivative, non non-commercial share alike, non-commercial non-derivative. So this is like the logo. So when you see this logo, you should know this is what they mean by their logo. This is, these are the logos for all the creative common licenses. Next slide, please. Okay. So um, what permission does creative common uh, allow? It allows for you to copy. That is, you can make copies of the work. Now for the copy a work, you can distribute, to share. you can share these copies of the made, you can share the copies of the work. You can perform, perform or play the work in public. Like an example I made where you said you can, 
maybe there's a play, there's a drama or a, a, a play that has been written, you can act it maybe for your school's graduation or your school's function or even in the theatre, depending on the license the work was released under. You can display, you can display a copy of the work in museums, in artifact, um, in archives, in like a, a, a gallery. You can display these works. You can adapt, that is creating new works out of the original works. But all of these are dependent on the licenses by which they are released upon. Because some that do not allow, some licenses that do not allow you to do certain things, you shouldn't do them just to understand what that license gives you freedom to do and what that license does not give you freedom to do. Next slide, please. Okay, so how to use a Creative Commons license. So now as a creator of a creative works, there are ways you can use this license. Having known all the licenses, you choose the one that you, 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 you feel is more comfortable with you as a creator that does not infringe your rights and in also in the spirit of sharing information. So the first is choosing your license. You visit the Creative Commons website and choose a license that best suits your need and goal as a creator. If you created a work to impact knowledge, to share knowledge to people, you can choose whatever license best suits you that you are comfortable with. Now you can mark your work, make sure you to mark your work clearly with the appropriate license so that others know how they can share and use it. Because if I have it in mind to share my work on that CC by SC and I don't properly state it in my work and someone uses it in um, probably for, um, that someone maybe uses it now since I'm creating on that CC by SC and someone uses it and does not share it. Now I have no claim to that because I didn't properly mark my work. You get So you should make sure your, your, the, the Creative Commons map is clearly stated on your work with the appropriate license so that when I come in, come in contact with your work, I can see that, okay, this work is released under this license and I know how to and how not to use it. And the third is to share your work. So after you have chosen your license, after you've marked your work, you can now share your work, trusting in the power of collaboration and sharing to take your ideas to new. I, like I said, you don't know where your work can reach because when a work is, is released under Creative Commons license, there's a range of possibilities where your work can get to. Next slide, please. Okay, um, this is kind of like, uh, almost with the last slide, choosing a license, sharing your work, use and adapt. And finally, other creators can use the work in accordance to the license that you release under. Now, how to attribute your work correctly? How to attribute a work correctly? Now, this is not for the creators. Now, this is for you that you are using a work released under Creative Commons license. Now, we know we said by is a constant here. So include the title of the work and the author's name. Like that should, that even, even if it's not the equity demands that you attribute the original creator of the work. So include the title of the work and the author's name. Then you include the type of Creative Commons license used. So that anyone seeing the work, we know that this is the license used in the work that you are referencing or the work that you are getting inspiration from. Now provide a link to the original work. That one is also very important for referencing. When I use a work, I, I, I create a derivative work from that work. I should at least provide a link so that others can see the original work and also serve as inspiration for someone else to use that same work that was an inspiration to you to create another work that may or may not be similar or completely different from your own work. And the last one, sorry, previous slide. And the last one is indicate if any modifications were made to the original work. But this now, you know, it's not, if it's a non-derivative work, you cannot make modifications to, but licenses that allow you to make modifications to the work, you should indicate that, okay, this, this, picture was originally with a black background or because I have I have the right according to how it was released to modify it. I chose a white background. You should at least indicate that that is how to attribute a work properly. Next slide, please. Now Creative Commons gives a broader sense of creativity. Like a lot of people who are who are who have this writer's blog or creator's blog, you know, when they get in contact with resources like this, they are able to, to get a broader 
broader range or broader perspective on things, broader perspective on cultures of different people, um, ways of life, religion, education, like the way things 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 go, the way things are being run in a different sector, you know, creative commons give this broad range of creativity that creators and individuals can source inspiration from. We also have easy collaborations, you know, so people from two different parts of the world can collaborate and work together using creative commons. When they share their works under um, flexible licenses, they can communicate interests, they can communicate ideas, and then they come up with something spectacular and something beautiful and also global impacts. Creative Commons is having a significant impact globally, helping to shape the future of creativity and knowledge sharing. Next slide. The last slide. So Creative Commons is changing the way we think about creativity and knowledge, unlocking the power of sharing and collaboration to build a brighter and more equitable world. So we are encouraging you to join the movement today and start sharing your works under a Creative Commons license. And I, I, I promise you, it is not something that you're going to regret because sharing your work under Creative Commons gives you this sense of impact that you have made on the, in the world, sense of you have contributed something to the open movement. And then someday somewhere you see someone using your work as a reference and there's this sense of pride you have in you that, I have inspired this person, or I have impacted this person in making a certain work. So this is an encouragement to you to use open creative common licenses to release pictures, release works, novels, paintings, any creative work that you could have. So far as you choose a license that you are comfortable with, a license that um, you, you, you like and is best suitable to you. So um, thank you very much. I will hand over back to Hope or Alafian. Yeah, thank you, Busala. Before you go, Busala, you are a renowned author. And <laughs> you've written multiple books. So I like I usually ask when when will you release your books under Creative Commons licenses? Or when will you dedicate your books into the public domain? <laughs> okay. okay. Um Creative Commons is it's it's actually something you've spoken to me about. And um, you know, the book is it's kind of in an art copy format. So I'm looking to get a soft copy of it, like uh, a detailed soft copy of it. Then I have plans of releasing it on the RCC by SE, which is kind of not really restrictive, restrictive, but also encourage the use of creative commons. So if you're out there like me and you have creative works, you've written a book, you can join me in this <laughs> to release our works on that creative common license, which is something great and interesting. Yeah, thank you so much, Rusala. So there's a question in the chat box. I got kicked out and I cannot read it. Can you please um, attend to the question? So okay, the question I... states, what are the different possible use cases of the creative commons license? I think the person is referring to in what scenarios can we use it? maybe the media formats, maybe pictures, images, or what do you think? It's possible okay. use cases. Okay, possible use cases. Um, okay, let's see. Let's get an example now. I am creating a presentation for probably an assignment or a test in class. I have a presentation and the most presentations we use pictures in presentations. So imagine I am looking for a picture that best suits something I'm trying to talk about. Now I go online and I see pictures and I see they are all rights reserved, copyrighted, you know? you know. I mean, some people use it, but you don't know when you can use a work that someone is very strict about this or copyright and then you land yourself into infringement issues and all that, okay? But then you can easily go to Creative Commons website, you can go to Wikimedia Commons and there are a lot of sites where you can get open license pictures. So I can easily take that picture that suits what I'm trying to talk about in my presentation and add that picture to it. But just like I said, you have to understand what license that picture was released under. Because if it's something that is non-derivative, you have to just use that picture as it is, no changing of it. But if I see something share alike, CC by SE, you know, I can use that picture. Maybe I can put the logo of um, 
maybe something I'm trying to talk about, you can put like in the corner of it, you can put the logo of it. You are still within the restrictions of that license and you can use it. But you know now, as it is CC by a share, like you can now be motivated to share your own presentation on that Creative Commons license also. So that someone out there, maybe in the next five years, wants to make a presentation similar to yours, person can see that and mean how exciting would it be? So those are scenarios you can use that even as an author, you are writing books, maybe children's story books. I think there's a website we found that, that we need a lot of children images on that open license. You are writing a children's story book. I know that children's story books are mostly filled with pictures. So I can see a picture that I should, I should um, adequately attribute that picture. And we learned how to attribute the title, the name of the author, the license was released on that, and any modification if need. So those are scenarios where you can use this crazy common license. But it's very important to know these licenses so that when you see them, you know how free or how restrictive you are in what you can and cannot do to these pictures. So I don't know if this answers your question, um, Adewali. Yes, yes, it does. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other questions? The, if you have any question, just write in the chat box or send us a mail at info.freeknowledgeafrica.org. Uh, Hope, I think you have an announcement to make or you are no longer making it here. I think she has disconnected, but that will be all for, for today's session, for today's webinar. I'm sure you found it educative and you've learned one or two things. Uh, thank you for giving us one hour to two hours of your time. We do not take it for granted. And we are pleased to have you join us. So this video would be available on YouTube. Uh, to be uploaded by the end of before the next before the coming week before the coming week runs out. So we appreciate everyone for joining us. Uh, thank you once again for for allowing us to share our knowledge with you, and we will meet you in the coming months of webinar. Thank you once again, and I say bye. Yeah, thank you very.